Now the question is, what happened? Like, we got this right, it's not wrong, but there's just the gaping hole <laughs> in your solution. So to help you try and work out what's happening, I want you to remember, like I showed you this morning, if you are trying to find the angle between two lines, right? We know we developed out of the expansion for tan A minus B, we developed a formula. What's here on the right hand side? On? Okay, now when we developed it on that day, we noticed this is cool, it saves you a lot of work, but there's a kind of problem with it. There's a place at which this breaks down. It doesn't always work, does it? What's the value that makes this break down? If that angle is 90, that means that the angle between the two lines is, well, it's a perpendicular pair of lines, right? Which means that this guy here is, and you're kind of stuffed because your denominator becomes zero, and that's a bit of a problem, okay? Tan has this issue because it's got asymptotes at 90 and 270 and 540, whatever it ends up being, okay? Uh, so 450. So this is problematic. Do you see why it lands you on a problem here? What's going on? Which solution did we get again? We got 90. That was cool. Good. The solution we were missing is 180. It just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth. Why did 180 disappear? It's on zero, that's true, but I actually could move this around and it could happen elsewhere. Like for example, if I just take this whole thing and move it up, like five units, both graphs, they won't intersect at zero anymore, but I still won't get this solution. There's another problem with 180 degrees. Wait, if, if x equals 180, then if you put it into 10x over 2, then it equals 96. So my premise for this whole setup, as soon as I started doing this, I was assuming everything was in terms of tan, right? How many tans do you see in the original equation? None. None. We introduced them, right? And the second you introduce them, you sort of open yourself up to this problem. Because of course, if I'm saying tan x on 2, then you stick 180 degrees in there, and lo and behold, you have tan 90, which, as we've established, is a big problem. Okay. So, the T results, they are wonderful, they're incredibly useful, they open up, I mean that question we did, uh, what was it, 5 sine x minus cos, that, that thing, right? There's really not other nice ways to deal with it, you'll find there are, but they're not nice. But it has this problem, right? So you actually have to overcome it by saying, whatever solutions you get at the end, you have to test. You have to say, wait, is 180 degrees a solution? Because if it is, this will not find it. So how do we test if 180 degrees is actually a solution? Just place it in substitute back into you, you do exactly what we did before with the solution you did find, right? We expected 90 solution, so we tested it. Well now, please put this underneath your working, wherever you said x equals 90. Now you need to test x equals 180. You don't usually have to do this. You don't have to do this with any of the, of the solutions and equations you've ever done before. You had to do it because you've introduced a method that, if you like, has a blind spot, right? This guy, this method, T results, it can't see 180 degrees, right? It's a little bit like someone who's colorblind, right? You give them stuff that's red and green, they can't tell the difference. This guy can't recognize 180 degrees as a solution. So you are under an obligation to test it, okay? Let's do it. Left hand side equals. What's sine 180? I have a value. Now I'm going to test the right hand side. Cos 180 is... That's zero. The left hand side does equal the right hand side. Aha! Even though T results couldn't find the solution, just manually testing it, which is a bit sort of like, I don't know, manually test it, but it's, not, it's really not that hard, is it? Like it's really simple work. Your calculator can do it too. Since left hand side and right hand side are equal, x under an e is a solution. When you receive a question in uh, an exam that includes t results, that involves solving an equation, 
Almost certainly, it will be worth either three or four marks. The third or the fourth mark is for this process. Whether you end up with a solution or not. Uh, if you go back to the one that we tried this morning, uh, what did we say? Five sine x minus cos x equals uh, two, right? Again, if I go back to that, I've got two solutions out, but 180 could be a solution, so I'm gonna test. Five times sine 180, what is that? Zero. That's zero. Cos 180, that is? We just said it. Minus one. Negative one. Minus negative one. So that's one. one, which is not the right hand side. So therefore, in this case, x equals 180 is not a solution, which is a relief because I showed you the graph. Do you remember? We saw all the points of intersection, we got them all. So x equals 180 is not a solution. Every time that you use t results for this kind of problem, for solving an equation, you must test. You must test because it has this blind spot. So therefore, the heading I like to call this is um, the trouble with t results. They're cool. They really are quite ingenious. But they have this problem, this blind spot, this Achilles heel. This is what you need to watch out for. Okay?